Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's all thank the Lord right now for every prayer that was prayed here this morning, for every need, for every desire. Let's believe right now and thank God for having answered that need and met that need in Jesus' name. More than just meeting it, He does exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. He's doing things that we didn't even know to ask for. Hallelujah. It's taking place in our lives right now in Jesus' name. We love you, Father. We thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your great love, Lord, where you have loved us. We just bless your name this morning, Lord. We thank you for your very presence, Lord. The reality of Christ in us, the hope of glory. We bless you this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Give him a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Hallelujah. Great songs this morning. They always are, but for some reason they resonated with me in a way this morning that they uh, just was special. Praise the Lord. The words, the, the music, it's amen. Great. Appreciate uh, Tammy and Peter this morning uh, putting that together. And Praise the Lord. I know it's not easy just trying to go without musicians and everything, but uh, hey, you know what? Uh, I think back when I first got saved and I used to talk to some of the old saints that were coming up through the brush arbors, you know, in the old little one-room buildings with a potbelly stove. And a lot of times they didn't have anything but maybe a banjo or a juice harp and a harmonica or something, you know. And yet they worshiped the Lord and the power of God came down and miracles took place. Power was released. Amen. It, this music stuff it's more about us than it is about jesus amen i mean he he's he's good when we when we are worshiping him he embraces that hallelujah now we'd like to have uh, musicians and have all the uh, uh you know the eyes dotted and the t's crossed but uh that's for us more than it is for the lord he's just looking after a heart amen that wants to worship him and praise him and he's pleased with that amen praise the lord god bless all of you appreciate you being here this morning Amen. Sun shining, that's a good thing. In Iowa in the wintertime, whenever the sun shines, that's a good day. Praise the Lord. You just get so sick of clouds and gloomy and dismal and all that stuff. So praise God. God is good. Amen. Amen. You know, I, uh, I've discovered a few things over the years living as long as I have. Hopefully a little longer. Praise the Lord. But um, I discovered that uh, a good listener is generally thinking about something else. <laughs> you ever had those conversations and you know they're they're not there you know i mean they're they're quiet but they're not really in the conversation so i just decided that uh i'll give you a, uh, just a quick uh, rhetorical question here but what's the difference between apathy and ignorance i don't know and i don't care <laughs> Okay, there's another. I, uh, I've learned over the years because we've had kids and grandkids. Now we actually have great grandkids. It's amazing. And uh, there's three ways to get something done. You can do it yourself. You can hire somebody to do it. Or you can forbid the grandkids to do it. Right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sheila's discovering this right now. It's one of those things. Praise the Lord. Okay. Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I hate it when people over-explain things. You know what I mean? That's my wife. I love my wife. She's a great wife. She's put up with a lot of junk over the years, but uh, she over-explains everything. She's telling me to go get something, she'll, you know, like I'm going to go to the store or whatever. And she tell, but she's got to tell me what aisle it's in, what shelf it's on, how far down the shelf it is, and you know what the color of the thing, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. I think, honey, I'm the same age you are. I've been to the store. I can find it, believe me. I can find it. There's a helpful smile in every aisle. You know, I mean, I can get somebody to help me out. The other day she says, uh, she wanted me to pick up some stuff for Christmas. And she's telling me how many, and, and, but then she had to go on beyond that and explain the meaning of the word many. Yeah. You know what I mean by many. She's 
trying to tell me. She's going to explain the meaning of the word meaning. And I told her, thanks. It means a lot to me. <laughs> Many. It's a lot to me. Praise the Lord. Okay, well, praise the Lord. God's good, amen. Set a merry heart, doeth good like a medicine. Praise God. So I think it's always good to try to find some humor, even in the stressful situations of life. Praise the Lord. I heard something the other day, and this is, really isn't my message, but I just want to share it with you because it really, it really spoke to me. When Jesus was at the well, remember the Samaritan woman, and, and he goes to, he said, I got to go through Samaria. And that was not a place for Jews to go. They hated the Samaritans. They were bigoted. They were racist against them. They hated everything about them because they didn't fit in with their groups and with their theology. And yet Jesus made a point to go there. And his disciples were, you know, they were questioning the reason for all this and everything else. But he said, uh, I want you to go get something for lunch. He said, I'm hungry. Let's, let's. So, but here's the deal. He sends all 12 of them to get lunch. Now that ought to cause us to wonder, there was some other agenda here that, you know, because it didn't take all 12 of them to go bring back a, you know, a burger, you know, whatever it was they were going to have for lunch. But he sent them away and then he's with this woman at the well and the, they come back and they immediately, they're questioning, why? Not only is he in Samaria, but he's He's talking to a Samaritan, and not only a Samaritan, he's talking to a woman who is not only a Samaritan, but a, you might call it a loose woman, a, you know, a, a, a kind of a not such a nice woman. Amen. They didn't get this. They didn't understand Jesus' agenda. They were with him all the time. But obviously, they, they were thinking still in some sort of religious terms. Because if you think about blind Bartimaeus, they told him to shut up. He was making too much noise. He was crying out, son of David, have mercy on me. And they were saying, get him out of here. He's a disruption. He's a distraction. Uh -huh. And Jesus heals him. Yeah. The woman whose daughter was dying, she was... Raising a ruckus because she wanted to get to Jesus because of her daughter. And they said, get her out of here. Uh -huh. she's, she's creating a scene. The children, even the little children, trying to get to him. They were running them off. Hey, they're a distraction. They're, they're causing a chaos. They're, they're like these little kids. They're kids, for crying out loud. That's what kids do, right? And Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Or how about the time they're, they're going out and they're on this evangelistic tour and there's some people that don't agree with their theology and they say, how about we just fry them? How about we just call down fire from heaven? And Jesus said, you don't even know exactly. what spirit you're of. Yeah. Exactly. So here's what I gather from that. Because they still have these religious mindsets, these self-described uh, religious experiences and their uh, predisposal to what God must be going to do here, what his agenda is, what he wants, and how he's going to do it. They, because of that, they couldn't get revelation. They couldn't really see what it was that God was wanting to do. They preconceived something and then expected God to fit into that mold. Exactly. It's kind of like Mark Twain said that... We were created in the image of God. Man was created in the image of God. And for 2,000 years, we've been trying to create him in our image. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And that's what happens. We're afraid to let God be God. Exactly. We're afraid to let God just get out of the box and just be God and love people and forgive people and show mercy to people and heal and deliver, not based on any criteria of ours, but simply on his love and his forgiveness and his mercy and his grace. Yes. So, I want to talk to you about some things this morning and uh, touched on some of this. In fact, I talked about a lot of this a couple weeks ago, but I want to go a little bit further. Not, not, not directly connected with that, but what grows out of this exactly. understanding. So, uh, let's begin, Peter, if you will. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. 
and we'll read verses 26 through 28. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. I told Sally the other day, we, I talked about this a little bit. I don't generally tell her everything that, that I'm studying on or, or preparing for because I usually don't know until the last minute how it's ever going to fit together because it seems, if it seems random to you, you ought to imagine what it's like when I'm trying to figure this out. It's, I like to think it's not really random. I'm just talking faster than you can think. That's another story. That comes from selling stuff. Praise the Lord. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen? So God says have dominion, right? All right? Chapter 2, verse 2, Peter. So God creates man in his image, gives him authority, gives him dominion over everything, and then God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So God gives us an agenda. Exactly. Amen. Authority. And then he says, now, nah, I'm out of here. Yeah. This is your thing. Right? Yes. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So God said, subdue and have dominion. Now, here's the thing that we have to understand. Because we are in the world, even though we're not of the world, we still operate most of the time as though we are of the world. We do. That's our problem. That's the reason why we don't see what it is that God wants us to experience. So the primary purpose of speech is not communication. It's releasing power. Now, the difference between us and animals is they have no dominion whatsoever. They don't need speech because they have no authority. They have no power. Praise the Lord. We were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Yes. Amen. Now, God said he's making man. He's creating man in his own image, and he's giving him authority over everything, and he's resting. Here he says we were in Christ before the foundation of the world. So whatever we are, we, were, we existed exactly. forever. Exactly. Right? The spirit is eternal. Amen. And so he says... Uh, you were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Well, that's difficult for us. Also, that we were saved. We were crucified with Christ. Uh -huh. We were raised with him. That all sounds crazy and, you know, confusing based in time. Exactly. But not in the spirit. It makes perfect exactly. sense. So here's the deal. We were in Christ before the foundation of the world. We were already, God already knew. He didn't predestinate anybody. This is not Calvinism. He just knew. He just yes. knows the end from yes. the beginning. So it isn't yes. like he's picking and choosing. It's just that he knows. He knows. Yes. And so he says we were in Christ before the foundation of the world. And then what happens? We get born. We're in the world. We're not of the world after we believe in Christ. So when we believe, what do we do? If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. you shall be saved. Yes. In other words, that truth that yes. God spoke, that you were in Christ before the foundation of the world, manifests. Yes. Right? Exactly. And how did it manifest? You had to say it. Yes. I believe. I trust. I expect that I will be saved because I'm doing what the word tells me to do. And if I do that, then I have God's word Amen. that I am saved. And Amen. in fact, have been from the foundation of the world. I've yes. always been a part of God's family. Yes. Yes. So it, or, 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 or language or speech is not primarily for communication. We use it to communicate, 
but it's primarily the main purpose, the real purpose of communication, or for, I should say for speech, is to release power. Yes. Now, in Genesis 1, God said, let there be light, or light be, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Then he said, let there be, let there be. God said, light be, God said, God said, God said, God said, whatever God said it was, right? When God said, let us make man in our image, he wasn't communicating. Who was there to talk to? Exactly. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Christ was in God. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Holy Spirit was in God. They were one. They were, I know they manifest in three ways, but they were all in God. That's what the Scripture tells us. He didn't have to say a word to, for them to know. Right? They know they have the same mind. He said it because he was releasing power. Yes. That's God's kind of faith. That's the kind of faith we're supposed to have. Yes. So he wasn't trying to communicate with Jesus or the Holy Ghost. He was releasing power. And whatever he said was. Amen? Yes. See, words either come from the intellect or from the spirit. If your mind isn't renewed to the Word of God, they're always coming from the intellect. If you get your mind renewed to the Word of God, more and more, the more your spirit is speaking than your head is speaking. That's why when you're confronted with a situation that is earthly and negative, a, a physical ailment, a financial thing, a relational, whatever it might be, if you're talking from your intellect, you're going to get the results of the intellect. That's why you've got to know what God said so you'll speak from your spirit, which is what Jesus was saying when he said, I only say what my father says. In other words, he, said, he was saying, I never speak from my intellect. I'm never speaking from circumstances. I'm always speaking from God, from his word, from his promise, from whatever he has declared to be true. All right? So look at Psalms chapter 8, verse 4 through 6. Psalms 8 and 4 through 6. And remember... Subdue and have dominion. That's God's mandate. That's what God has spoken to us. What is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. That's us. Yes, it is. Amen? Now... Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 1, and we'll read verses 9 and 10. Now read this. We're going to read this. and read it. I, I, if, I, if you all were here a couple weeks ago when I, when I was preaching the, the other message that I was talking about time being irrelevant or only relevant in terms of this natural world, right? I said Einstein. I was talking about Einstein. He was one of his theories, you know, was time and space and yeah. so forth. He's traveling through the city. I read this. I've got a, a couple of his books and a, and a, and a biography of his. And, and he's riding in the city, and he sees this big clock. You know, a, a lot of towns, even here in Iowa, in the smaller towns, you go in the, in the town square, and they'll have a, you know, the city hall or whatever, and they'll have the big clock there. And mm -hmm. It's that way in much of Europe. And so that's what he was doing. He was driving, he was in this bus, and it was traveling down the street, and he could see this big clock. And he started thinking to himself, if we were going fast enough, I'd get there before the yeah. clock strikes another tick, right? Yeah. Then he got to thinking that if I could go fast enough, I'd get there before it had yes. reached this tick, yes. right? If, if, that, if that were possible. Well, it obviously, yes. it is. It is. So the Concorde, I, just think of this, SST, the supersonic transport, they don't use them now but they did back in the 90s, and they flew from London and Paris to New York. It's, it's the truth. The Concorde actually would leave London at a specific time, and it would get to New York earlier than it left. Yeah. Now, we know the rotation of the Earth and so forth and time zones and all that, but it's still true. Yes. It's just for example, it left London at 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. It reaches New York City at 8 a.m. Uh -huh. before it ever took off. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying. It sounds crazy, 
But the truth is, I used to fly, when I was in the Marine Corps, we'd fly from the East Coast to the West Coast frequently. From Paris Island, from Camp Lejeune, uh, from Beaufort, South Carolina, to LA, to Camp Pendleton. And it's like a three hour flight. But there's time zones there. Mm -hmm. So you get there only an hour later. Actually, you know, by body time, by natural time, it was a three or three and a half hour flight or a four hour flight. Exactly. But in reality, outside of time, I mean, if you just took the clock off your wrist, because you'd have to reset it when you got to LA because it wasn't right with the time that was in the Carolinas, right? It always kind of was weird, you know? Australia, I was in Australia, I went to Australia a couple, three times. You get to Australia and you're a day ahead. Yeah. You're going that far east that you're actually the, the next day, right? It's just, it's, see what I'm saying, but I'm saying this is just the natural way of looking at it. But in, the, in truth, uh, time is irrelevant. It is. It only means something to us. God said, let the light and the darkness divide the day and the night. There, there's no time in eternity. Right. There's no time in God, just like Tim was saying. That's why he's the I am. Yes. He's always I am. Why? Because he always is. It's always right now with God. Yes. So everything that God ever did or in our thinking would ever do is done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. So Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, he says, The thing that hath been... It is that which shall be. That which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It hath been already of old time, which was before us. Yeah. Now, if you read that from the natural, it just, confu it, I mean, it's just kind of, what's he saying? Yeah. But if you think of it in terms of the spirit, exactly. it makes perfect sense. It does. We were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Yeah. Right? We were crucified with Christ 2,000 years ago. And yet we live. Yes. That's Paul's quandary. I'm dead, but I'm alive. Uh -huh. I'm eternal, but I'm still here in time. Uh -huh. Job chapter 7 and verse 1. Remember, God said, subdue it. Have dominion. And then I'm going to take a break. Is there not an appointed time to man upon the earth? Are not his days also like the days of a hireling? A hireling. It's like a hired hand. God created man, gave him dominion, and then he rested. If you hired somebody to oversee your business, and then you went away, they would have dominion over that business. All right, Job chapter 14, verses 5 and 6. You know, a lot of times we're trying to get God to come and do something, and he's saying, you're in charge. You have power. You have authority. You have dominion. Yes. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, when you go on vacation, you don't want the boss calling you every other day, do you? No. You don't want some other employee calling you and saying, uh, you know, we got this problem here. Hey, I'm on vacation. Sorry, but, you know, we got an issue. we we got some stuff here. That you're the only one that can fix it. I'll be back in two weeks. I'm on vacation. Exactly. I wonder, now I know I'm dumbing this down to human thinking, but I, I wonder if God doesn't think that way sometimes. Whoa, hey, wait a minute, I left you in charge. Yeah. Come on. Pick it up. Do the job. You've got the ability to do it. I wouldn't have left you in charge if you couldn't do it. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as a hireling his day. Turn, just turn away and say, look, until you get this, I'm not coming. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. We're yes. waiting on God to show up yes. and for rapture and everything else. And God said, that ain't happening until you get this thing together. There is an appointed generation. There is somebody that's going to get this. And I think that's why we're seeing a lot of the things we're seeing, getting revelation that we're getting, is because we're getting to that place that God has said, the fullness of time. In other words, 
we, you're, you're doing what I called you to do, and because of that, now we can wrap this thing up and move on to the next phase. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right. There is a time, and it's determined time. And it's a time determined for us to have dominion on the earth. Absolutely. And that time is not complete until we have it, yes. until we do it. Exactly. Right? Yes. Because it's only time for us. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. God knows it's done. Yeah. He's waiting for us to get out of time. Just do it. Yes. Quit looking for something to happen down the road. Yes. Quit expecting some change to take place. Amen. Job chapter 14, verse 14. If a man dies, shall he live again? That's a that's a rhetorical question. He's not really asking it. Mm -hmm. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. Wow. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, God manifests to reap the harvest of his word. Christ in you, mm -hmm. the hope of glory. We, we look at these things in a theological way rather than a practical, spiritual way. Yeah. These are truths. Yes, they are. They're not just pipe dreams. They're not just some kind of religious mumbo-jumbo that we repeat. It's the reality. It's the yes. truth of God. Yes. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 8. When we think of these things in these, in, from a spiritual perspective, it starts to make sense. It doesn't seem as random. It doesn't seem as chaotic. And there's not the same pressure on us except to believe. For I thought I should boast somewhat. This is Paul saying, for though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. Now, what do we know? We know he has authority. What's, what is the authority? We've already said it's, it's speaking the word. Now, he says, and we know this, a prophet, he, he only says what is going to edify. Yep. And that's what Paul is saying. I, the prophetic word that I have is, gives me great authority. But that authority isn't for me to belittle you or to demean you. It is for me to edify you. So you'll understand you have this same authority, right? You have authority. You have power. Authority to enforce spiritual laws, right? That's the authority that you have is to enforce spiritual laws, and that authority is power. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hey, somebody's going to believe this, and somebody's going to actually do it. Yes. Yes, I, I want to be in that number. Yes, Praise the Lord. Yes. I want to I wanna be one who's actually living out uh -huh. God's promises. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 10. And the beauty of it is, I can. Because yeah. it isn't based on me. Exactly. Again, to what Tim was saying, I still fail. I still, I don't, I miss the mark just like Paul. But I'm pressing exactly. toward what? Towards this call, this calling, this, this revelation, this truth of God's word. Yes, yes, yes. So therefore I write these things, Paul again, therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification. Now what is Paul saying? He's saying what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He's trying to tell them this is not about some different kind of religion. This is about power and authority that you've been given. Yes. Yes. He's trying to get them out of... The, he came from that strict religious background. Right? And he said it didn't avail anything. It didn't... It, 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 it's, it's all like dumb compared to the call of Christ, to, compared to what God really wants to do in a person's life. Yes. Yes. Our authority, our power works within the covenant power of God's Word. Yes. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 19 through 24. 
So then you read something like this, and all of a sudden, it makes a little more sense. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Yes. That's how come you got the authority. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father. No man knoweth who the Son is, but the Father, and who the Father is, or and who the Father is, but the Son, and those to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him into his disciple, unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. What? The power of God being released through a man. Uh -huh. God in flesh. Yes. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. We're... Continuing to say, well, yeah, well, that was Jesus. And I'm seated with him in heavenly places. He is my brother. God loves me exactly the way he loves Jesus. He has given me the same power and the same authority. Jesus operated as a man. The son of man. That's us. That's who we are. That's what we are. Uh, this is Luke chapter 10, 19 through 24. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The blood of Jesus is the basis for this covenant. It guarantees the promises of God who cannot lie. Yes, yes. amen. Titus 1, 1 and 2. Titus 1, verses 1 and 2. Now, if God said it, it has to be. Exactly. He cannot lie. It's not just that he won't lie. He can't lie. It's not within his power to lie. If somebody said, is there anything God can't do? Yeah, he can't lie. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life with God, that cannot lie, yeah. promised before the world began. What did he promise? That we were in Christ and that we would be created in his image and that we would have dominion. Yep. Yes. Yes. He can't lie. That's right. He said it, it has to be. Yes. John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Wow. There's facts. We got all kinds of facts. Fact may be that you have been diagnosed with a sickness or a disease. Fact may be the bank says you're overdrawn. The fact may be that uh, you, you know your relationship may be a little dysfunctional. The fact may be this. The fact may be that. But the truth is God's word. By His stripes you were healed. They became poor that you might become rich. He was rejected that you could be whole and received. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Psalms 138 verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple, praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Yes. For thou hast magnified thy word Above thy name. The only thing more valuable to God than his own name is his word. Yes. Yes. See, here's the deal. Demonic forces can only operate where God's truth or God's light is absent. The enemy cannot control an environment simply by choosing to do so. We have authority. We have dominion. We have to give him. We have to open a door. Yes. See, they've got to wait. They've got to wait for us to open a door for them by either wrong believing or wrong speaking. Yes. Yes. 
So our focus isn't on darkness. No. Jesus wasn't going around saying, oh my God, what a horrible situation. No, he said, just have faith. Yeah. God didn't say, whoa, it's really dark out there. Let's get some light. No. Right? Exactly. He, didn't, he didn't acknowledge the darkness. He just spoke light. Yes. He just spoke the truth. Yes. And we make it all about fighting the darkness. Yes. The darkness can't even be dark unless I let it. Exactly. He exactly. is the light of the world. Yes. Yes. Our focus isn't darkness. Our focus isn't even getting rid of darkness. No. Our focus is turning on the light. Yeah. Our focus is truth. Yes. Yes. Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, verses 10 through 18. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to, to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The truth is light. Yes. So when we're confronted with darkness, when we're in the day of evil, that's what the day of evil is referring to, when we're confronted with darkness, the first question you've got to ask yourself is, how can I get light into this situation? Not how do I overcome this darkness. How do I get light here? I'm not going to argue. See, Jesus, when darkness tried to invade the light, God had just said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And immediately he's out in the desert. And the devil is saying, well, if you're. He didn't, he didn't get into a debate with him about whether or not he was. He just said, it's written. Right? Yes. He just he didn't try to push the darkness back. He just brought light. Yes. And what did the devil do? He fled. Yes. Because he has no weapon no, that can overcome the word of God. Amen. Truth is light. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 6:14. Look at verse 14. You probably all heard this many times, but it's still true. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. What's the first thing you do? You stand in the truth. Yes. Your loins girt about with truth. Roman, this is describing Roman uh -huh. uh, armor. And the Roman armor all connected to the belt. Yeah. To where the loins gird your loins with truth. Everything flows from that. Yes. Truth. That's the first thing you do. You get truth. Yep. Yes. And that begins to affect the other weapons. Yes. yes. You understand what I'm saying? We've got to believe we are light. Yes. As he is in the light. We are in the light. As he is in the light. Yes. You've got to believe that we are light. And what's in us is greater than anything that's in the world. So our belief, and consequently our words, are key to spiritual warfare. Absolutely. That's what he's trying to show yes. us here. We've made it about fasting and doing all sorts. And I'm not against fasting. I'm not against praying. I'm not saying those aren't valid things. I'm just saying the truth is you can pray from now until Jesus comes. But if you don't have faith, if you don't believe, if you don't know the truth, I don't know what you're praying. Right. You're praying a problem instead of praying the word. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Instead of... Aligning yourself with light, you're just throwing more dark out there. Yep. Yep. All right, 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 18 and 19. And I'm, not, I'm just reading a brief portion of this. You may or may not know the story, but the truth is this. Uh, the prophet is dying. It's Elijah. 
and the king, they're under attack. Uh, I think it's the Syrians, and it's really a bad situation. So the prophet comes to the king, and first of all, let me say this. God, in the, under the old covenant, spoke through his prophets. Right. So the prophet represents God in this story. It's a historic story, but he, it, the prophet is representing God, or he's a representation of God. The king is a type of us. Yes. We are kings and priests. We rule and reign. Yes. We have authority. We have dominion. That's what kings have. All right? And everything is subject to it. So he said, take the arrows. This is the prophet now. This is Elijah talking to the king. And he said, take the arrows. He took them, and he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground. And he smote three times. And then he stopped. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, thou shouldst have smitten five or six times. Then hadst thou smitten Syria till thou hadst consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. Or three times. So the prophet told the king to carry out a prophetic act. Right. Now remember, again, the old covenant, the prophet spoke for God. And we are kings. God's told us that we have dominion, we have authority. But the king didn't realize that his response was going to determine the level of future victory. Right. Right. He thought it was just some, yeah. well, that's what he said to do, so I guess i got to do it. Uh -huh. So he does this lackluster three things, and then the man representing God says, oh, you idiot. You should have just beat the ground with that thing and you would have completely destroyed your enemy. But because you only did it three times, this passive kind of response, you're only going to defeat him three times and he's going to keep coming back. Because uh -huh. you won't destroy him. Right. Right. You'll just make him mad. Yep. When the king responded passively, prophet was upset and the reason he was upset was because this tremendous opportunity was missed right. because he, the king didn't take it seriously sure. and there's something even more important being revealed in this, in this story the prophet implies that the king's actions would make some sort of deposit into the invisible or into the spirit realm uh -huh. that would change things yeah. because obviously Hitting the ground isn't going to do anything. There had to be something being released into the spirit realm. Are you with me? Yes. When we're speaking the word of God, it may just look shallow and kind of goofy and straight. No, it's releasing something into the spirit realm. And when we do it haphazard and lackluster, and sometimes we do it and sometimes we don't, God is saying, oh, come on, dude, you do not realize the power that you have, the prophetic, right. spiritual right. power that yes. can be released if yes. you would take this serious. Yes. So the impro the, this, he implies that there's a, this, this, this thing being released into the spirit realm. What does the scripture say? Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. You're releasing something into the spirit realm. When you start binding and loosing here, you're doing it by the word of God because you can't just do it with anything. Right. But when you bind and loose by the word of God, you're releasing something into the spirit realm. Yes. Yes. That's why I'm not just begging God for healing. I'm declaring I am healed. Hear me that? Hear me sickness? Hear me disease? I am healed. Yes. yes. Why? Because by His stripes... Stripes, I was healed. I'm, I'm not just blowing to the wind. I'm speaking into the spirit realm where I have authority. Yes. 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 So you got to believe and therefore speak. He's telling us something has to happen in the spirit realm before it happens or before it manifests in the natural realm. And the only way to do that is by speaking to it. He said, my word comes down like rain and snow from heaven. And if, I, if it comes back to me, it will produce what I sent it to do. Yes. Yes. And it'll release spiritual power that will affect this world. You got to believe and therefore speak. You have to stand on God's word. 
That's how you place a demand on the promises of God. Amen. That's how you place a demand on the God who cannot lie. Uh -huh. Mark 4, uh, verse 13 through 25. So this isn't just a gimmick. It's not just some you know, twist on some other religious teaching. This is the fundamental way that we operate as gods in this earth, as a body of Christ. And we've dumbed it down to everything but this. Exactly. And wonder why our results are so chaotic and sp spasmatic and mm -hmm. sometimes and not all the time. And, yeah. and then we wonder, well, maybe that's because God likes them more. No, God, God doesn't have any difference in his love and affection for any one of us. Right. The difference is, do we believe? Exactly. If your dad said, all right, kids, y'all... Be here tomorrow, 8 a.m. I got a crisp $5 bill for each one of you. And if only two of you showed up and there were six kids, yeah. does God love, or does your dad love the other four less? No, they just didn't show up. Yeah. They didn't come expecting you to get the five bucks. Uh -huh. The ones that came with their hand out got the money. Right? Yeah. I know it's simple, but that's, that's how it is. So he said unto them, but know ye not this parable, and how then shall you know all parables? In other words, this is the parable that explains all the parables. The parables are simply spiritual truths that have been dumbed down to natural things so that these unspiritual people could understand them. And so he says, know ye not this parable, or if you, if you don't know this parable, then how are you ever going to know any of the others? Because they all are developed out of this. The sower sows the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. They did the... Mm -hmm. Runs him off for a little bit, and he just comes back. Exactly. So they think, well, it didn't work. If you'd stand in the truth, your loins girt about, okay... Come with the meeting and taketh away the words that were sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. Afterward, when the affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. In other words, they hear it and they go, wow, that's great. But they don't ever apply it again. It was great. Yeah, happy day. And we had a little shout and fit at the church, and then we left and you know, the enemy's out there and slaps us upside the head as soon as we get out there. And we forget everything that we've been told, only yeah. now that we're just reacting to darkness. Yeah. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and, and the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. All the other pressures overcome the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, Receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. In other words, they use it. They use the word. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel, or is light to be hid? Or under a bed, and not be set on a candlestick, or out where it yes. does away with the darkness. Yes. Right? For there's nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that shouldn't come abroad. There's nothing being held away from us, amen. There's nothing being deprived of us that cannot be revealed if we would believe, yes. if we would shine the light, yes. amen. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, take heed what you hear. Now watch this. Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that has, to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even what he has. Now that doesn't sound like God. Except that what God is saying is, this is all about supply and demand. If there's no demand, the supply is irrelevant. Right. Verse 24. He said unto them, take heed what you hear, with what measure you meet, it shall be made. Okay, so take heed to what you're seeing here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Take heed to what you hear. And the, to the degree that you use it, right. 
is the degree to which you will receive. Right. But if you don't use it, what little you've got, you'll even lose. Right. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It shall be measured to you, unto you that here shall more be given. Verse 25. For he that has, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken even what little he's got. Uh -huh. Why? Because you've got no defense. Yes. So look at the, naturally speaking, you can have a great product. You can have the best product. But if there's no, no demand for it, you're going to go out of business. Yeah. If there's no hunger, there's no dinner. Right. Sally can make the best meal. But if I don't have an appetite, yeah. if I'm not hungry, yeah. there's no dinner. Yeah. I'm not eating. You see what I'm saying? God in Christ did not come to give us religion. He came to give us life. Yes. God life. And yes. that more abundantly. Dominion. Yes. Authority. Yes. Power. Yes. Not just animal life. Not just to live X number of years and you know, eke out a, a living. Procreate. And then die. Uh -huh. No, He came to give us dominion. He came to give us a God life. A king life. A life where you rule and reign with Christ. Yes. God gives according to your demand. Amen. People died last night. Gasping for the last breath. Hospitals and places all around the world. Uh -huh. Struggling to get one more breath. To live one minute longer. Uh -huh. To survive. And we've got Christians... Who live to just complain. Sure. Just let another day go by. Yeah. A day that they're never going to get again. An opportunity that will never be there again. But if you'll stand. This is what God's telling us. If you'll fight the fight of faith. Through the process. Of his word. God has more than enough provision. Absolutely. Exceeding abundantly. Yes. Above all that you can ask yes. or think. All right, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7. And remember again, the prophet represents God. There cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. I don't, man, can you just hear her? How oh, my husband's dead, and you know he loved God. She's implying that God wasn't there for my husband. Nor as the servant did fear the Lord, and the creditors come to take unto him my two sons to be slaves. Where was God? Mm -hmm. And Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? God speaking. He said, What do you want? Tell me, what have you got in your house? What have you got? Yeah. And she said, I don't have anything except a little pot of oil. Holy Ghost is represented by oil. Oh. Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. who leads us and guides us oh. in all truth. So he said, God said, go borrow some vessels. Get something. Get some stuff. Get some bottles. Get some bags. Get some, some, some stuff. Borrow it from anybody and everybody. Go to all your neighbors. Get as much as you can get. Even empty, get the empty vessels. And don't just borrow a few. Don't just do the... Get as much as you can get. Get everything that you can get. And when you come back, you'll shut the door upon you and your sons and pour out into all those vessels and you'll see, set aside that which is full. So she went from him, shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured the oil. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me yet another vessel because she still had oil. And he said unto her, there isn't any more vessels. And that was the end of the oil. She wouldn't have asked for more vessels unless she had oil, unless she knew that somehow there's going to be enough to fill another vessel. But when they said, no more vessels, she said, no more oil. The oil stopped. <laughs> and 
As long as there was vessels, demand. As long as there was demand, yes. there was oil. There yes. was provision. Yes. God hates waste. Yes. He doesn't give according to need. He gives according to demand. And we know that practically because if he gave according to need, there wouldn't be any need. Nobody would be in need today. Nobody would be in lack. He doesn't give according to the amount of need that there is. He gives according to the amount of demand yes. that there is. Yes. The woman, as long as she was just sitting there complaining about what her situation was, she was stuck with that situation. It yes. wasn't until God said, what do you want? What is it you're, you need? Exactly. And what have you got? Well, I got the Holy Ghost. I can believe you for something. I can go to the Word of God. Uh -huh. Yes. You know, here's a, let me just go a little bit further. With I was talking to my granddaughter a while back, and I was sharing some of this with her. And she had gone, she had gone to church, and she's, just, she's a new Holy Ghost believer. Now, she believed in God, but she just had, has had an experience in the Lord that has really got her on fire for God. It's exciting. And uh, she was in the service. She goes to a large church in uh, Colorado. And anyway, she said uh, she just felt she could not take her eyes off of this gal that was up in the front. And she just felt like God really wanted her to pray for her. But she said, I was uncomfortable doing it because, you know, I'm just new and I don't want people thinking this is, I'm trying to get attention or something. But she said it just was really on me to do this and she said but I didn't and finally one of the other people in the church came and prayed with her and she said I just felt horrible and I went down later you know how we do we try to make up for what we didn't do that the Holy Ghost is telling us to do and she went down and talked to her and so forth and she said but it just made I just felt bad I felt like I just missed it you know so the next service was a Wednesday night service I think and there was one of the leaders of the that were leading that particular service was there and again it happened to her again and so she went down. She said, this time I'm not going to miss it. I don't care. People can think whatever they want to think, but I'm not going to miss God this time. So she goes down and just hugs the woman and prays with her and then turns around and walks away. The woman didn't say anything, but about a half hour later after the opening part of the service came to her and said, Jess, when you pray, she said, I had a migraine all day long. I tried to get somebody to stand in for me tonight, and I couldn't find anybody to do it for me. And she said, I was in such pain that I thought I was going to be sick. And you came down and prayed for me. The minute you turned and walked away, the headache was gone. Now, here's what I'm saying. God had provision for that headache. Mm -hmm. But if there hadn't been a vessel willing to be used, right. she'd have suffered with that headache for the rest of the night. <clears throat> or until some other vessel came along. Sure. You are a vessel. I'm a vessel. We're all vessels. And this is what's so uh, discouraging, or uh, not really discouraging as much as it is just aggravating, that we're here with half the church gone. Yeah. It's selfish. It's, it's, it's withholding yes. a vessel yes. that God wants to use for somebody. Yes. You may yes. think, well, I don't need to go. I mean, I know as much as Nathan does. You probably do. You might know more than me. But you're not fulfilling your purpose. You're not placing any kind of demand That's right. on the anointing. You're not, right. you're not doing what God wants you to do for his body. Yes. And that is be a vessel yes. that he can use to Amen. meet demands. Amen. Amen? Yes. It's a vessel that he can bring provision to. Yes. So that's my two cents worth on that. But Amen. He doesn't give according to need. He gives according to demand. He gives according to faith. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness will be filled. If you don't care, you don't get it. Yes. Not because he hasn't provided it. Not because he hasn't done everything for you to have it. It's because if you don't put a demand, you don't get the provision. Yes. That's just how simple it is. Confessing God's truth. It places a demand on God's promise. On God's supply. That's dominion authority. That's how it works. Praise the Lord. The king was passive, and it affected the future. 
Your future is determined by your confession, not your complaining. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. The widow said, my husband's dead. My kids are going to be slaves. And God said, make a demand on the supply. I already know the problem. Yes. You're not giving me information that I didn't already have. I know you've got an issue. Exactly. I'm asking you, do you want some supply? Do you want provision? Yes, 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 yes. So we've got choices to make. We praise God and show faith. Amen. Or we show unbelief by complaining. You say, well, it's legitimate. I mean, look, it is real. I know. I get it. I'm not being insensitive. I understand there's a problem. But what I'm saying is me feeling sorry about your problem isn't going to change the problem. I got problems. All God's children got problems. You know what I mean? The question is, what children are going to place a demand on the provision that God has for us? He wants to... Hey, He died that none should perish. But we know some are going to perish. And what's the difference between the perishing and the saved? Belief and placing a demand on what He's provided, which is salvation. It's the only difference. He doesn't want anybody unsaved. That's right. But he doesn't make anybody put a demand. That's up to us. It is. He's got more than enough provision, but somebody's got to place a demand. Absolutely. The consequences are relative to responses. So if your response is, God hasn't done this for me. God did it for somebody else, but he won't do it for me. Or, I thank my God that he has supplied all my needs according to his riches and glory. Yes. Praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus, for meeting my need. Amen. The consequences yes. are relative. Complain. Unbelief. Uh -huh. Get you more of the same. Yeah. Believe. And praise the Lord for his goodness. Yes. Yes. And you receive the provision. Yeah. That's how it works. Doesn't make God a bad person. Doesn't make God bad. He gave us dominion. He gave us, he gave us authority. He cannot take it back and just supersede our authority. He wouldn't be God. He wouldn't be truthful. That's right. We've got dominion. We've got authority. We act on that power. And it releases God's word, the truth into the darkness. Amen? Either that, or we just are naked and afraid. Mm -hmm. God gave Adam truth. Adam didn't believe it. He could have had everything, yeah. and he ends up being naked and afraid. Yeah. And the only reason was because he didn't believe what God said. God didn't make him naked and afraid. In fact, God said, who told you you were naked? All right, Psalms uh, 100. I'll get going here and wrap up. Psalms 100, 1 through 5. This is David, a man after God's own heart. A lot of times we wonder, okay, how was he a man after God's own heart? This guy was a screw up. I mean, he was dysfunctional in so many ways adulterer, murderer, uh, liar. Uh, over and over, there was all kinds of stuff, and yet God says he's a man after his own heart. Why? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. One through five. Okay. Know you that the Lord is He's God, is He that made, has made us, not we ourselves. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, His truth endureth for all generations. This is what made David a man after God's own heart. He placed a demand on the goodness of God. He placed a demand on the mercy of God. He placed a demand on the grace of God that wasn't even a dispensation that he was in, but just like Enoch, he believed God and got the benefit of something that wasn't even for him. It's like the woman who is a Syrophoenician that has got the bloody issue and she's not supposed to be healed and she's not supposed to get any benefit because she's outside of the covenant. But, but Jesus heals her anyway because of her faith. Yes. Yes. She was supposed to wait until the dispensation of grace. They were still under the law. 
The power of praise and thanksgiving. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 9 through 11. And that's why, you know, I hear people say things and I just, I just, I'm not correcting all the time. I, I, I want to. There's a part of me that just wants to say, just please shut up. Please stop. Don't you know what you're saying? Because we don't even know what we're saying. We're so used to talking that way that we think, well, I'm just, just sharing. No. You're cursing yourself. You're bringing, you're, you're not chasing darkness away. You're not bringing light you're struggling with a bunch of darkness and it's not going to get any light lighter. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither remember when they were in the wilderness and God had been blessing them and, and the, they, they started complaining about Moses and the guy that was speaking for God. And they were murmuring and they were complaining. And what happened? Fiery serpents came out and started biting them and people started dying from the poisonous snakes. They raised up this uh, brazen uh, uh, cross, or serpent, I should say, a brazen serpent, and whenever anybody would look on that serpent, they would be healed. That represented Christ. Yes. So when they take the focus off of the situation and put it back on to God, they were healed. The others died. So that's what Paul's referring to. He said, neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. It wasn't God destroying them. They opened the door. Yes, they did. All these things happened unto them for examples. For us. Uh -huh. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So complaining and doubt gives access to snakes. Gives access to the enemy. It opens the door for the devil. It does. Now they didn't just complain because they were in an uncomfortable circumstance. They actually were complaining about Jesus. Well, I don't know why God hasn't done it for me. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know. I don't. I just can't believe that God's going to do this because he, I've been waiting and blah 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 blah. They complained about miracles. They said. We hate this light bread, yeah. the manna. They said, we hate this stuff. We're sick of it. Jesus said, I am that bread. Uh -huh. They were rejecting Jesus. They were uh -huh. accusing Jesus. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. When you give thanks, God moves. If complaining accesses serpents, then the obverse is true. Thanksgiving accesses God's provision. Look, I'm not picking on anybody. I got this stuff too, right? I'm sharing because I got the same battles you got. But I'm, I'd be less than a pastor if I didn't share the truth and tell you, hey, there's ways out of this stuff and you've got the key. You are the means by way of getting out. You have the means, amen, to bring light. Yes. And it's the Word of God. Yes. And I know, you know people ask me things and I, and I say, you really, you look, you don't want my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you think you want my opinion because you just want to hear something from somebody. And I don't blame you. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, come on. I, I prayed that same prayer to God in my bed one night. God is saying, do this, do that. And I said, I have no man. You know, how pitiful. You know, how, oh, surely he'll feel sorry for me. I don't have anybody to help me. So God sends me to Dooley, Arkansas to a black man in a little... Uh, Pentecostal church down there, just a little dinky church, amen, in this unincorporated community. And I said, man, I don't even know why I'm here. And he said, well, not much I can do for you then. Great guy. He offered to have me come and preach in his church. And I said, I'm not looking for a pulpit. I could, I've got a place to preach. I'm trying to figure out what God sent me down here to you for. And he said, well, I'll pray for you. And he prayed, and he prayed the very words that I had said to God. Wow. Wow. God sent me to see this guy with his little church in this little town. It wasn't even a town. And God said, that's my man. Uh -huh. And you are whining. Yeah. 
you have the same capacity, you have the same ability, you have the same access. This guy believes, and you're questioning. Yeah. And you're thinking you've got to run to Rodney Howard Brown and to this place and to that place and everywhere else in order to get some kind of transfer of anointing. Yeah. And I can talk to this guy in Dooley, Arkansas, who doesn't know you, wasn't praying and begging for a revelation or an insight, and I can speak to him about the needs of this white boy in Iowa, yeah. a thousand miles away, right? Yeah. I've got a man, he said. I've never forgotten that. That just so powerful. And we think it's about what I'm doing or not doing, who I am, where I am. It's got none of that. Yeah. God's got an agenda, and all he needs is a vessel. Yes. All he needs is somebody to say, I'll go. I'll do it. Yes. I'll hear you. I'll speak. Yes. Again, words, speaking, that's not the primary function or what communication is about. The primary function of words is releasing power. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yes. Psalm 77, 1 through 3. Praise the Lord. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained, and my spirit was overwhelmed. Now, this is interesting because we've read from David, who was a man after God's own heart. This, if you, if you have it in your uh, footnotes or endnotes, in my Bible, it says it was written to the chief musician, a psalm of or by Asaph. So this was written by Asaph to whoever the chief musician was. Now, I, I, if I had been the chief musician, I don't know that I would have wanted this, this psalm. I don't know that I'd want to be singing this, okay? Instead of singing your problem, sing blessings. Yes. At some point, you have got to speak to yourself. Yes. Yes. Psalms 100. There's just, I think, five verses there, Peter. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Again, this is David. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It's he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Praise the Lord. Yes. Back to Psalm 77, and verse 3. Yeah. I remembered God, and I was troubled. I complained. And my spirit was overwhelmed. That just sounds the complete opposite of what David just said. When you're complaining, look at this. I remember that I was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. When you complain, you're affecting your spirit. Yes. You're impacting your spirit. Yes. Uh, verses 4 through 6. Here's another indicator got my attention for thou thou holdest mine eyes waking I am so troubled that I cannot speak I have considered the days of old the years ancient times I call to remembrance my song in the night commune with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search personal pronouns I I I my 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 me 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 yeah. praise the Lord 
I've got problems. My trouble is bigger than anybody's troubles. I got issues in mine, my mind, my mind, my mind, my me, 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 me. Yeah. Oh my back. Oh my this. Oh my this. oh my god, here comes another bill. Oh my what am I gonna do? David said, sing unto the Lord a new song. This guy's singing the old song. And David said, sing a new one. Amen. Psalm 77, verse 7 through 9 now. We're about done. Here, wrap it up. A couple more scriptures. Will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Do, do his promises fail forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has his anger shut up his tender mercies? Asaph is turning God away. He's blaming God. Uh -huh. Ah, but as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story, praise the Lord. Verse 10 through 12. It's all his confessions, all of his saying, right? And, he, and I said, this is my infirmity, but this is my weakness. This is my problem, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. Praise the Lord. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of what you do. Yes. Talk yes. of your doings. Yes. Praise the Lord. Uh, he said, here's what he said. I talked myself into this mess, yep. and I can talk myself out of it. Yep. Mm. This is my weakness. I'm talking about stuff I shouldn't be talking about. Yeah. And my strength is in the Lord. When I change my conversation, uh, I change my circumstance. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Verse 13 through 20. And we'll be done. Now watch what happens. Just the moment he makes this shift. Mm -hmm. Thy way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Yeah. Thou art the God that doest wonder. Nothing has changed in his situation but his language, but his speech. Right. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the son of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw thee, O God. The waters saw thee. They were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out. Now everything is God now. God wasn't anywhere. Now all of a sudden he's in the water. He's in the clouds. He's, God's every place. The clouds poured out water. The sky sent out a sound. Thine arrows also went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. God's going everywhere. Everything I look at, everything I see, everything I hear, it's God. God's involved. Thy way is in the sea, thy path in the great waters, thy footsteps are not known. Thou ledest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Praise the Lord. So he's seeing God in everything. He's remembering what God has done. Change your thinking, and you'll change what you're saying. Whatever situation you find yourself in, it's an opportunity for a miracle. It's a chance to place a demand on the provision. You speak the goodness of God, and you get the goodness of God. So here, the question is simply, do you want snakes, or do you want provision? Yeah. Speak light, speak truth. Speak the word, and you'll be speaking power. God cannot lie. He is the light of the world in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Give him a hand clap this morning. <laughs> amen, amen. God bless you. This is the discipline. It isn't keeping a bunch of rules. It isn't keeping a bunch of regulation. It's keeping a watch over your tongue. The most unruly member. Little thing, but it changes the directions of vast vessels. Praise the Lord. If we ever get control over this, hallelujah, we've got heaven on earth. Uh -huh. We've got dominion and we've got authority. It's what Jesus used all the time he was here. 
I only say what my father says. I only do what my father does. And here's the results. Miracles. Provision for whatever the need might be. He is the great I am. Not I was, not I might be someday. I am. Yes, Praise the Lord. And that I am mm. is in you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Can I share this scripture? Please. It's one that I have up on the mirror in our bathroom. And it's one that I feel like God gave me going through the hard time. You know, with sure. that addiction, you know, that Eric is free from. But he gave me this word to encourage me. And it is, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the Lord. That's it. And that's what he has brought me out Amen. of. And that's a good word, Rita, because so many of us have thought, because of religion, that we'll see the goodness of the Lord, but not until we're dead. Right. But God said, I want you to see it here in the land of the living. I want God to be revealed here <coughs> and now. And the only yes. way for that to happen is for us to link up, hook up with God so God can have access. Praise the Lord. Yes. God bless all of you. Amen. Just. Go in the power of his might, have confidence in God, and never say never. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed. God bless you.